Today we're going to look at the structure of the lymphoidal system. We'll look at the various organs, the uh, makeup of the organs, a little bit how they're involved in the induction of the immune response, uh, and also surveillance uh, to uh, help us keep a germ-free environment and also to protect us from foreign invaders. Lymphoidal tissue. The objectives is to look at the cellular basis of immunity, the effectors of response, a little bit about the induction of the response and recycling, and ontogeny, where did it all come from? Now the functional immune system, as you know, is to protect against foreign invaders of the body. There's a lot of invaders out there that would like to take up a residency in our bodies and the immune system tries to prevent that. Also pr uh, produce, protect a germ-free environment in the body. So basically we are largely germ-free inside uh, and it wants to help maintain that uh, by the immune response. And to uh, accomplish this, there are a host of organs. There's lymph nodes throughout the body. Uh, there's prior patches uh, in, the, in the, the intestine, bone marrow, we got spleen, thymus, uh, tonsils, various lymphoidal organs uh, that will be associated with um, mounting the immune response. Uh, the cells that are largely involved are the white blood cells. You've got the lymphocytes, you've got neutrophils, the macrophages, uh, different cells that help to mount the, the immune, uh, immune response. If we look at one of those organs, uh, one that's uh, more prevalent in the, in the young individual is a thymus. And the thymus has different lobes. And we see different lobes here. Uh, and uh, it has a cortex uh, and a medulla for each one of those lobes. In the medulla, uh, you can see uh, Hassler's corpuscles, uh, which are concentric rings of materials that's diagnostic for the thymus. So in the thymus of a newborn, we can see different lobes. Each one of these lobes uh, has uh, a cortex uh, and a, a medulla. Uh, if we look at this, uh, it is a capsule that surrounds the uh, thymus uh, with septum projecting in. Uh, and the, the cells in the thymus uh, are epithelial reticulum cells that make a reticulum network uh, throughout the thymus. So this is a cortex, and it's the cortex which where we have the blood thymus barrier. The barrier is not in the medulla, it's in the cortex. And so here we can see some of those uh, epithelial cells, a big a nucleus with a big nucle uh, nucleolus, and a high density of cells in the cortex. Less density of cells in the medulla, you still have these uh, reticulum cells uh, located in through there, but also you have the Hassler's corpuscles there as well. So another organ is the lymph node. And here we see the lymph node has got a capsule around it and a series of follicles on the outside. Uh, and this is the cortex and then, then this is the medulla. Look at a little higher mag, uh, you can see that you have these maxillary sinuses. These are uh, fluid-filled, lymph fluid-filled sinuses, uh, and also there's maxillary cords. So these are the cords, uh, and then in between the cords you have uh, the sinuses uh, where you have the lymph fluid going through. Also, uh, around the capsule, just inside the capsule, you have a subcapsulary sinus in through there. So we can see there, here's a subcapsular sinus, and then one of those follicles with a germinal center. Here's a germinal center on this one, cortex, medulla, with the maxillary cords and the maxillary sinuses. Of course, you have blood vessels running through there as well. Now on the outside, all the way around, uh, you have afferent lymphatic ducts. And this is ducts that are bringing, bringing lymph into uh, the lymph node. So these, you can see these bringing in maybe a little valve right in through there. Here's one of the follicles, a germinal center 
located right here. So this is a germinal center, the light areas uh, within the follicle. Now, as I mentioned, the afferent lymphatics come in from all different locations around the lymph node. So they bring fluid in, draining lymph from the various tissues. As we see here in green, it goes down through the uh, subcapillary sinus in through there, and then it goes out uh, through the hilus region. So this is a germinal center. You have mitotic activity. Uh, you have the reticulum cells in there too. This is different from the, from the thymus, and the, these reticulum cells are actually um, a mesenchyme. So here we can see the germinal center in through there from one of these follicles, subcapillary uh, sinus in through there in the capsule. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have the afferent uh, fluid coming in, and that fluid percolates in the subcapsular space or subcapsular sinus. This is a capsule, this is a sinus. In this region next to the capsule, the endothelial cells lining that sinus are continuous. However, they are discontinuous uh, on the surface that uh, touches the follicle itself. And that allows fluid to percolate down um, uh, among the cells so that you can get the reactive uh, cells that are located in the lymph node uh, to be uh, exposed to uh, the antigens that are coming in through the lymph. So this is the subcapsular sinus right in through there, the follicles and the medulla. Now near uh, the follicle, here's the follicle here, at the parafollicular region uh, going towards uh, the, the medulla, uh, we have certain uh, blood vessels, we call them post-capillary high endothelial venules located in through here. So you've got uh, arteries and veins coming out, but right near the follicle itself, you have the parafollicular region, and we have these high endothelial venules. And this one, we see the, uh, the, there's, the endothelial cells are a little more cuboidal than normally what you see. Here you can see one, and this is a typical endothelial cell, much flattened. So they're higher, they're a little thicker uh, cells than is typical endothelial cells. And this is where lymphocytes come out of the blood uh, into uh, the lymph node in terms of recycling uh, for uh, uh, lymphocytes to recycle throughout the body uh, to, uh, to find a location where they find their antigen. So uh, there's receptors for T and B lymphocytes that come out of the blood into uh, the lymph node at that uh, point in time and part of the recycling. However, they do not leave through the high endothelial venules as a one-way trip you only go out of the blood into uh, the lymph node. So again, we can see these high endothelial venules here and here, uh, and that's located in the parafollicular region right near uh, these follicles uh, that we see. Now in terms of induction of response, uh, you need to get the antigens um, uh, in the vicinity uh, of the, in contact with uh, the reactive cells that are in the lymph node. And this is all part of the recycling of the lymphocytes should they not find their antigen. So in the post-capillary venules, these high endothelial venules, it's where uh, the, uh, the lymphocytes come out of the blood and then they go into uh, the lymph node. You also get other lymphocytes coming in through the afferent lymphatics. And then they go out through the efferent uh, lymphatics through the thoracic duct back into the bloodstream and then they would recycle into another lymph node trying to find uh, trying to find their their antigen. So in the venous sinuses in the in the medulla here we see the the cords and the sinuses and we see some neutrophils coming through uh, in the lymphatic uh, sinuses. <coughs> you also see there's a cords this is a sinus uh, and we can see some reticulum cells located in there as well. Now, in the cords, there's a host of macrophages, and you can see these macrophages that had picked up this collateral uh, carbon uh, to illustrate where they're located. So they are picking up debris that's coming through the lymph node uh, and also presenting that 
uh, uh, that debris and antigens they're in uh, to the lymphocytes that are associated with them. So you, you have fluid coming in from all the places, but they go out one region, the efferent lymphatic duct, which maybe this is one, certainly this is the efferent lymphatic uh, uh, leaving uh, that lymph node. So uh, the fluid comes in from all around, as we see here, uh, as we talked about before, through the afferent lymphatics, as we see in green, percolates down through, go into the sinuses, and then finally out uh, through uh, the efferent lymphatic with valves you see here, and through a hilus region where all the blood vessels go in and out of uh, in the hilus region, but also you have a draining lymphatic uh, coming out of there as well on its way to the thoracic duct. The next organ is the spleen. Spleen has a capsule, and the spleen has a white pulp and red pulp. And you can see how trabecula is projecting down through uh, through the spleen to uh, give su give support there. And uh, here we have the germinal center again, uh, and uh, a little artery, a central artery, uh, of which we have a periarterial sheath uh, of lymphocytes going around that in the white pulp. So the spleen has a host of reticulum uh, fibers uh, that run through there. You can see these with a silver staining uh, run through there to su give support uh, to the lymphocytes as they percolate uh, down through there. So here we have the white pulp and the red pulp, the capsule uh, that we, uh, we see. Uh, we can have, so this is like a lymph nodule or follicle with a germinal center inside there and in there is a central vein. So we have a central vein, it's never in the center, it's always like on one side, uh, but we see here, we can see the central vein uh, right in through there. So this is white pulp, red pulp that we see. So we have the germinal center, a central vein, trabeculae uh, going through there, which is connective tissue carrying blood vessels, uh, and then you have the pulp arteries uh, that go in through there. Now around the central vein, which is right here, we have a periarterial sheaf of lymphocytes. So this is makes up the white pulp that comes through here. So this is white pulp and red pulp that's in the spleen. And right between the two, between the white pulp and the red pulp, is a marginal zone. And the marginal zone is important because that's where you have penicillary arteries right in the marginal zone. And here you can see where the artery has branched out. Penicillary means branching. And so the arteries branch out through there. And what happens is you've got blood coming through the periarterial sheath and then uh, the blood vessels empty into the splenic strands. And so the strands in between the sinuses uh, is where whole blood is dumped and the penicillary arteries open and close uh, to regulate uh, the dumping of the whole blood uh, into the uh, splenic strands uh, that occurs. And here you can see, this is a splenic strand right in through there, and then this is, this is a blood sinus uh, right in uh, through here. And you can see that we have reticular network within the strands themselves, uh, but no reticular network uh, in the venous sinus. If you did, it would clog it up. So we can see one of those, this is a cord in through here between the sinuses, and this is a sinus here, and you can see these cells lined up. These are the literal cells. So here you can see them. These are endothelial cells, macrophages nearby, and the red blood cells have to squeeze through the literal cells, through these cells here, uh, to be able to get back into the bloodstream uh, when the red blood cells are less pliable with age. Uh, what happens is they linger a little bit too long and they're not able to go through there uh, as they're not as pliable to be able to squeeze through the literal cells and the macrophages eat them up. Another organ uh, in the oral cavity is the tonsils. And you have stratified squamous epithelium and then you have these, another lymph uh, um, uh, tissue that we, we have the nodules here with the germinal center uh, and lymphocytes around the outside. Stratified squamous epithelium of the oral cavity, non-cretinized, and then we see these germinal centers in this connective tissue. Uh, so, uh, 
adrenal center, lots of, of lymphocytes are located in, in this region. As we go down uh, through the esophagus, stratified squamous epithelium again, we see lymph nodules, and you see lymph nodules throughout uh, the GI tract. Here we can see them in the stomach, and through there, uh, and here we can see a high density of, of uh, different white blood cells uh, uh, in the in the colon. Uh, here we can see plasma cells, uh, lots of nice plasma cells that we can see in through here. Um, there's a nice plasma cell. Uh, and also in the appendix. Appendix, we have another uh, lymphatic nodule, germinal center, lots of cells ready to respond uh, to anything that is exposed to. And one of the main players is the lymphocyte. Uh, the T lymphocyte uh, makes a killer cell or memory cell, uh, and the B lymphocytes makes plasma cells that uh, produce uh, antibodies. And these are derived from the bone marrow. Here we see an early uh, red blood cell uh, that is a, like a pro-normal blast. Uh, and then we see some band cells here, uh, more band cells uh, in the production of uh, neutrophils. And so uh, in the beginning, you had the fetal organs uh, is a source of a lymph lymphocytes. And then it goes into the bone, uh, bone marrow uh, and the primary lymph org organs is a thymus, where you have the blood thymus barrier uh, to prevent uh, the development of T lymphocytes from seeing antigens until they're developed and know what self is. Um, uh, and, um, and then you've got bone marrow is where you get a lot of your B lymphocytes. So secondary organs, uh, you want to be antigen dependent. That is, you want to get them in contact with the, with the antigens. Lymph node is a very good place for that. Lymph nodules throughout the GI tract is good for that. And also the spleen. So these are secondary organs where you want the antigen and the reactive cells together. This is in contrast to the primary organs where you do not want the antigens there. And this is what we mean by the appropriate context for the development uh, of, of uh, cells or, or uh, their response. So stem cells are in the bone marrow, a host of stem cells in bone marrow that make the white and red blood cells. You got primary organs, secondary organs, um, and where they can produce reactive cells for the process. So back to the whole body, you have a host of organs. You got lymph nodes, uh, you got prior patches, spleen, bone marrow, uh, thymus, you got the spleen, uh, as well as tonsils to help combat uh, infection and to help to maintain a germ-free uh, environment uh, in the body.